Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the run rundown. Brian's currently dying off a bong rip, and he will be speaking most mostly. I am your host, Evan from My Media TV, and we are back with the rundown. Now, given you're muted at present, I'm going to say this, and this will be what's the only up, time, guys? This will be the only time we mention this. <laughs> I just find it funny that this is this came from this headline was from Yahoo News of all things. And it just, and it's, I think it's, I think the most boomer ass, you know, example of like pop culture reporting. And, uh, I just think this is very funny. Uh, Drake raps over BBL Drizzy and he's not cool enough anymore for that to matter. <laughs> I think that is, uh, I think that is very funny. Yo, let me tell you, I don't know how, I don't know why, but Reddit put the, uh, Drake subreddit in my fucking news feed i don't even follow it but goddamn goddamn drake fans y'all are doing some obfuscating like a mother motherfucker that it, it there's some grade a dick riding my friend for real moving on uh i want to we're going to before we get back into fun stuff i want to talk about something a little more technical, mildly political, we're both agreement on this, there's no debate. Uh, amendment killing nationally legal cannabis makes it into House Farm Bill. A ban on intoxicating hemp products have made it into the House version of the Farm Bill. If the amendment makes it through a polarized House and divided Congress, it would end America's beef, brief experiment with nationally legal ca cannabis. The language added to the House version of the Farm Bill by Representative Mary Miller from Republican Illinois. All right, I just want to say to all of the fuckheads, Republicans out of Illinois, your state isn't floundering simply because of Chicago. If Chicago did not exist in your backwater ass state, you would be the Mississippi of the north of the Midwest. Shut the fuck up. That previous bill made it far easier for American farmers to grow non-intoxicating bare varieties of cannabis defined as the statute as hemp for industrial and medicinal use. But vagueness in the law's wording combined with the fact that intoxicating and non-intoxicating varieties of can cannabis are functionally the same plant allowed the evolution over the past six years into something not seen since the America's Gilded Age, a thriving market and universally available, largely unregulated cannabis products. Because of the ambiguity created by the 2018 Farm Bill, a massive gray market worth an estimated $28 billion has exploded. A coalition of 22 state attorneys general wrote Congress in March, demanding members shut it down. The attorneys argued that the 2018 law forced cannabis-equivalent products into our card economies regardless of states intentions to legalize cannabis use and dangerously undermining regulation blah 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 bashy bullshit miller's amendment which was co-sponsored by a republican from california the worst type of republicans by the way ones from california the most hitlerite of without a doubt like it's like they have, to, they have to uh overcorrect so much because they're from california and, and to the point where they're just uh, regulated to a third party because they're so fucking on the fringe and insane that nobody wants to vote for them. Um, who is from a state with legal marijuana restricts the definition of legal hemp to naturally occurring, naturally <coughs> derived, and non-intoxicating cannabinoids. That likely means cannabinoids like the Delta-8 THC naturally occurring but generally chemically derived and certainly intoxicating would be out. So two would be intoxicating drinks and edibles containing Delta-9 THC. Different names for what are roughly the same active chemical in marijuana sold regulated states like California. Yeah, I think this is just a response to Biden trying to change the scheduling of weed. I think that's all this is. It is. It, it may I, pass, but at the same time, I don't think it's going to be something that's enforceable, especially against a $28 billion industry. They're not going to they, outright... They, and shut it down. They're going to try, like, it, it's not going to be until most of the people over the age of 60 are dead that we're going to have act that that cannabis is going to be, like, where there's just too many people who are completely poison brained about the, um, about, like, the war on drugs and stuff that they, they, they just need to die. Not, not, not immediately. They just need to die off. That's what I mean. It's just, there is so many. 
I'm not saying that I'm not saying that the baby boomer generation and the elder Gen Xers all dying off over but like of old age would lead to a better world. But I will say that it would stop the fucking obstruction of them preventing us from making it a better place. It's the obstruction that's the biggest thing. It's I wanted the obstruction. To, I wanted to say something because <clears throat> funny enough, yesterday I literally watched a uh, I watched the breaking points debate on whether weed should be legal or not. God, I fucking and, hate Sagar and Jetty, man. Oh, I hate. No, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't him. It was like the second co. It, it's like the B team who usually hosts on the hill. Also, oh, I that forget pick, their that names. Pick, that 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 pick me bitch, the blonde one. Uh, yeah, and then the white guy. Yeah, just just like just like pretty white woman who espouses right wing views. And a generic ass like like dude. Like well on on the position of the we debate, I love how the biggest like criticism from the other side is we that, don't that, have enough That was a bad criticism of Ryan Grimm. I love Ryan Grimm. Uh they just say that uh, we don't have enough data to say that weed is inherently, you know, beneficial fully because it obviously has some side effects in certain personality types. Yeah. Without a doubt, is Absolutely. very true. But the counter to that was we were never allowed to study it because it's a Schedule One drug. We're not allowed to do any. Uh, it's placebo human uh, study versus Double the. Trial double blind human trial yeah they said there was only one done over the course of like twenty one thousand other studies and there's no there was no definitive way to prove it because it also was shit weed it was a good weed it was pretty much nothing so it it, it really does come it, it, it it's what i think here's my thing right do i think that there are some benefits of thc and stuff like yes are are they are they going to help people? They obviously help people with epilepsy, like obviously, as an epileptic. Um, I don't take it for mine, but I do know people and that do, and it's very useful to them. The difference is, is that I think what's ultimately going to end up happening, regardless of how the medical like stuff falls, recreationally it's popular enough, but with enough people, and it is like, it. I think I think just apply, you know alcohol legislation to weed well what you're saying to me is alcohol and tobacco because they're both legalized are not scheduled drugs no they're not in fact insanity in, in insanity fact, in fact there are more like taking a, 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 a taking a shot of, of 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 vodka is more immediately damaging i would argue to your body compared to you know now granted i i'm I, you know me i am very much the mindset of there's nothing that should go in your lungs except air there's nothing healthy no, I'm with you. Your lungs except yeah air. smoking it without a doubt cannot be healthy it's not the healthiest way to get but if you're it. nobody's gonna argue for that right but if you're taking an edible like i would argue that like that is nowhere near as damn it like 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 obviously messing with your brain chemistry does run some risks obviously Depending on who you are, what your brain chemistry is like, your medical history, but 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 by and large, there is zero reason marijuana shouldn't be legalized, regulated, and taxed. No. And the other thing about the other the shitty thing about edibles is if you're buying it from a plug or if you're buying it from a shady dispensary, you're not getting the right dosage. If it's actually legalized and regulated, you're getting the same thing over and over and over again. You I get have that, that consistency. You want to know what I hate about the about uh the, like when I've had weed honey in the past? That you never get like the right amount. You either take too little, too much. It's always it's, it's never that it, Goldilocks period. You know, I, I I you know it's gone now. Like we've used it all, but um, you know, I don't have any more unfortunately. But um, it uh, I took. I took about a much, like, I took a dollop about the size of a dime. I thought I was taking just a little bit to feel it. I was gone. Like, actually gone. Like, if I had taken, you know, what I wanted to, like, if I was going to just be, like, fuck around and find out, I would mm -hmm. have greened out. 
No, for sure. I was high 10 hours later when I woke up in the morning. As it should be. I but was not asleep. every time. But not, not every time. I, if I would like to be able to take an edible and know that if I take this much, I'm going to just feel loosey-goosey. If I take this much, that's a sleep aid. <laughs> if I take If I take this much... We're going on work. a trip in our yeah. favorite rocket ship. <laughs> zooming through. So, so right. I would I like that consistency. Down. Yeah, I, I would mm. like that consistency. But moving on, um, uh, we'll, 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 I just got a couple stories. We'll get through, and then we go on, and then we go, and then it's your turn to ramp, and then it's your turn to yap. I this is we should have called sure. this. You know, <laughs> you know what? We should rebrand the rundown into something into in, in, like into the uh, into the bona fide yappers podcast. Either that or Brian and Evan's Yap Hour. Nah, I would Either love that. to. I, I would love to start a podcast with somebody and call it the uh, 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 the Yapper Hour or some shit like that. Oh fuck it, that's just some dumb shit. But uh, moving on, uh, Microsoft reportedly ready sixteen billion dollars bid to acquire Valve and Steam. Now I'm going to do it. No, I'm, I'm no, go, I'm going to. So so I'm just going to allay everybody's fears right now. <laughs> We have nothing to worry about. And the reason no, I, I say we have nothing to worry about is because Gabe Newell is not going to do that shit. Gabe Newell's son, who thinks exactly like his father, is not going to do that shit. We've got, a, it, like, it, we, we're we good. Valve prints money. Valve prints money. There is no reason for them to sell. Yes, they have six, they can get sixteen billion dollars. That'll be more money than they'll ever need. Like even after taxes, there is no reason for them to give up Valve. Valve has a virtual monopoly on video games on PC, not because they have done shady bullshit like Microsoft to corner the market, but because viewers like me and you trust Valve enough. To give them our money and make our platform a choice, they enable Linux gaming. They have tons of free features and amenities. There is no reason why, if you're on PC, you shouldn't. You you are not using Valve unless you are just a pure pirate, and that's per that's perfectly morally okay in my opinion. So, so this is not this. There's no amount of money short of like trading companies that I think that that would do. Valve Valve is a privately owned corporation. They don't have shareholders. They get to do shit like take losses on Steam decks. So there is like a consistent baseline for developers to develop video games for Linux based hardware. Like there is nothing you all have to worry about. This is just fucking Microsoft executives yapping, trying to figure out what they can do next while while beating the FTC back with a fucking stick. Just get the FTC on their ass more. God damn, more. Yeah, like, like here's the thing. Um, Valve has has always not Valve. Um, Microsoft just had the policy of buy expand barely. Literally, they will buy up their if they if they if they will buy they will buy up their competition. If they can't beat their competition, they buy them up. They get all of their working projects out the door, and then they kill the shit that they bought. They did. They, there were studios recently that they had closed that were award-winning studios that they had been saying they wanted to make award-winning games. They closed the studio that made Hi-Fi Rush. Even keeping open the one that just came out. Uh, what is it? Uh, I can't remember. Dragon Blade, something Blade, not uh, Sun, uh, Hellblade, Sinua Saga too. Yeah, it's yeah. that was a no promotion. It, I didn't know what was coming out. I didn't know. No, I it knew was. about it too. But like, we, I, there I, was I, nothing we, for we, it. We stream the uh, Game Awards every year here on High Media TV, and I knew about it. I saw the trailer. It looks so cool. Not the type of game I would play, but there's a market for a game like that, and they didn't do it. So and honestly, now, so, and just real quick, now they're saying that they're gonna keep their studio open until they make the third game, and <clears throat> that's gonna be like 
10, 10 years, it's going to be the next console generation. Maybe. Uh, I mean, the, the gap between Sinio, the uh, Sinio Saga 1 and 2 was only like 4 or 5 years. Yeah, I don't know if we're thinking of the same game. I think we're thinking of thinking different ones. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But anyways, um, uh, moving on to the last topic I wanted to bring up before we move to your uh, to your stuff. Uh, Fifty cents, did he do it? Docu series sold to Netflix a bidding war. <laughs> you know he's gonna talk all that shit. I couldn't find it. This one ever, but Fifty Cent is King Petty. Uh, it's gonna be good. I can't. It's gonna wait. be. It's gonna be. Listen, listen. Like, Fifty Cent knows. Like, Fifty Cent is a grade A hater, and that's the funniest thing about him. Like, <laughs> he's the type of person where, like, think about. You remember Kamari from WCC? Yeah. The, du the dude who was there for like two yep. weeks, pretentious as shit. Got Najee all, all, all upset, right? Yeah. Oh, Najee's a, yeah. Najee, Najee is another good example. If if you <laughs> gave Najee 50 cent money, would Najee not use that money to fuck with all the people he hated? Don't you think I would do that shit? I feel like, I feel like you would pepper it a little bit but you wouldn't go all in because you're like i got money what the fuck i gotta worry about i'm chilling i got i'm, I'm a fuck my girlfriend i'm a fuck my other girlfriend i'm gonna i'm just be chilling okay true 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 but you know najee yeah. najee najee's the najee is the he he is people at sport yeah somebody said this to najee bro I, I, I don't mean this telltales out of school. I don't give a shit. I don't know this motherfucker anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> he didn't talk to me in ten pages. And I didn't talk to, and I didn't bother to talk to him either. Um, yeah. I, yeah. and I know, I, whatever, I'll get shit. I'm, I'm saying it. Who gives a fuck? This poor bat, like, he was with one person for years. Like, in the moment he puts his dick in a white girl, she comes up pregnant. Don't say that. No, don't say that. Not on the stream. No. I've seen, I've seen the kid. I've seen. I, and this is years, years ago. Years ago, I've seen it. Cute kid. I'm sure they have a very happy family. But I'm just like, I, I told that. I told him. Like, I told him for years. Wear fucking condoms. You absolute troglodyte. No, I got. I'm good on the pull up method. Bitch, you thought. <laughs> you you thought. Wrong. Crazy. I'm the chill. Crazy. All right. What you want to talk about, man? So I wanted to talk about the fact that Shane Gillis has a new Netflix show. I watched the first two episodes. I don't remember the name, but it's pretty good. I like it. Who's Shane Until Gillis again? A big white dude, a comedian. Uh, got kicked off of SNL. Is fuckhead who made the George Carlin AI? No. That's Will Sasso. Okay. Yeah. Trust me, I hate that dude too. Because that was fucked up. Okay. But yeah, uh, it just got renewed for a new season as well. It's only six episodes. 30 minutes each. You know, I think it's pretty good. It's funny. It's with <clears throat> excuse me. It's with a lot of the same people that he did his sketch comedy on YouTube with. So, uh-oh. Your webcam went out. Hey, ladies Welcome and gentlemen. In. Hey, back again. We're back. If you're ever trying, ladies and gents, to uh, try and, uh, I don't know, go through the effort of uh, producing a podcast or do YouTube broadly, I would, I would encourage you. Maybe not half, maybe not put your fucking computer room in a uh, unair conditioned cat room that smells like shit. Is that if what you, if you can avoid in? it? 
No, I think the problem is, is is that like we have three, we have two air conditioners on this floor. One, three, if you count the one I have running in fan mode, uh, a computer and two refrigerators, along with everything else like bedrooms would normally have running in this bitch. And I, we don't have enough wattage. And Meadow and I have been meaning to go to uh, fucking what's it called, uh, uh, Home Depot to to get it sorted, and it just has not been. It just hasn't been sorted, uh, and now I have to go into NVIDIA Broadcast, look at the camera. Why are you being a pain? I don't want the GoPro web. Did my fucking, did my fucking, like, HD camera crap out on me? Oh my god. Yeah, it did. If this shit, like, is, like, busted now for whatever reason, I am going to have a connection, because I... Uh, will will uh will die. I will I will actually I will actually kill myself. I cannot afford to get new shit. Is it okay? I can't hear you. Guys, maybe YouTube isn't best. God save me. God save me. I like ev everything in my entire setup just fucking went hurt the third the third, and I don't fucking know why. I I, I know, like out of nowhere, just to explain what I saw, out of nowhere your GoPro like uh thing came up and it just said GoPro and I was like, Hey Evan, can you hear me? And then nothing. So. And also my Steam Deck, my Stream Deck is fucked too. So now I'm gonna have to do all everything with it manually to, to distance. Uh, I'm so happy that you keep me living every day. Nothing in my way. Gotta love you too. No, it's not. No, it's not YouTube. It's not the YouTube. It's my fucking hardware that's the issue. I, I, I need okay. to get. I need to get air conditioning in this bitch before I can like start like using my computer at all again. Jesus Christ! Okay. So, doing this for the first time. <laughs> so, one of the, before we get into like the stuff you sent me while we're in our hey, uh, brief intermission, mm. is um, I wanted to hear your opinion about the Assassin's Creed Shadows controversy. Uh, I haven't had like a, a opportunity to really talk about it because I'm very much not an Ubisoft fan. At least, like I liked Far Cry Five a lot. I loved Far Cry Three, but uh, no, of course. And and the last Assassin's Creed game I played was Black Flag, and even then I only played the first sixteenth of it. Like I got, I like that's about it. Yeah, I feel that. But uh, yeah, the thing about the Ubisoft controversy is like, who, who cares? The guy was a retainer. Like he, whether or not he was, a, he was an actual samurai. Assassin's Creed never says that they're actually based on fact. Like they say, no. this is loosely based on nonfiction, but this is not how it actually like happened. We're not portraying the truth. So like, it, it is the series that is literally we are taking. The loosest interpretation of history possible of a video game. Yes, they literally... we're, we're gonna have ninjas right. in Renaissance Italy. Might as well. That's literally what they did. And they were the trying thing... to stay away from Japan for so long because they didn't like the ninja comparison. And so many people were like, just do it already. They're like, fuck it, who cares? And what sucks is I wish they did it in their heyday because then they would have pulled off some fire shit could you imagine if assassin's creed 3 was in fucking japan like that would have been amazing i like assassin's creed 3 i'm just saying in just the setting not necessarily the story beats changing just yeah, apply it and put it in japan it would have been fucking blah. The but the thing is he said yeah uh and, and also, and also to the retainer bit, I saw Jap Japanese Twitter has been like fucking goofing on the blue check marks a lot, and I literally saw uh, one translated the other day that said, "Y'all know that when you're a retainer for a lord, that means you're like a samurai. Like uh, a, a retainer and... takes multiple different forms, and that includes as a samurai." 
You know, it's and, just, it's like the 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 the, the shogun. I, if I and this is me speaking here. Like, I, if mm. I'm correct, I think the uh, shogun it like the shogun is literally a retainer for the emperor. In theory, they're supposed to serve the emperor as their retainer, as their protector, as their thing to person managing the emperor's affairs. Like and that I was think... the that was the whole premise of the shogunate. If I'm not mistaken, I think the daughter is the daughter of like an emperor or something like that. I think yeah. that's what she is. So, yeah. It just my fucking take from this whole thing is fuck Ubisoft on the whole hundred and thirty dollar fucking price tag for that the part. three day exclusivity and the fucking season pass that they haven't even announced yet. Like it's craziness. This and Star Wars Outlaws, I hope they both fucking fail or people just buy the fucking base game. Because if they buy anything past the fucking base game, it's going to show other game studios that this is the right fucking price tag for everything. And it shouldn't be. $90 at the most. Assassin's Creed Shadows the three uh, ha has sold, uh, like, uh, like the um, $130 edition has sold more than the base game. Uh, it's despicable. I mean, it's... I am... This is the company, come by the it. way, that made Skull and Bones, the first quadruple A game. We saw how that turned. That failed miserably. The worst part about this is, how dare game studios increase the price of video games when currently triple A game studios are releasing what should be called bets at this point it's hit or miss if they're going to work at launch if they're going to work after the day one patch and whether or not they're going to be half price in a month or three months from then it's bullshit it I is think, bullshit i think ultimately at the end of the day um we are in the era of the double a game Definitely. We are we are in the era of. Here's what I think, and this is what I think. And like, and I'm I'm parroting Pirate Software Thor from Pirate Software here. One dollar game, shit show war game. Five dollar, uh, three dollar game, arcadey game. Five dollar game. Uh uh uh, five three to five dollars like arcadey, ten dollar <laughs> premium arcade game. Slash low level indie, fifteen to twenty dollars. Reasonable indie indie title, thirty dollar premium indie. Forty, double A. Fifty, sixty, triple A. Seventy and above, unacceptable. Scam, bullshit. Because uh, this Cause point, because because I can't. I think the only seventy dollar game that I have paid for and that I have seen to be an actual good benefit for like a good cost was Baldur's Gate 3. I hate to say it to you. Baldur's you Gate 3 is the, is the It only... was 60. Where was... Was it a 60? I think it was 60. I, I thought it was 70. No, I think on PC it's 60. On console it's 70, I believe. But on PC, I believe it's six. No, you're you're right. It's it's sixty. It's sixty. Well, how much was seventy Outlive? for the seventy no. for the like digital exclusive uh, yeah. bundle? But yeah. sixty for the base camp. Yeah, that that's the thing. They got so mad at fucking Baldur's Gate three for having all that shit and still pricing it at sixty dollars because they know they know they can't compete. And that's that's a game that should be priced at one hundred and thirty dollars. I mean, I, tell me, I, I'm wrong. I would I would have paid one hundred and thirty dollars for Baldur's Gate three. It's something that actually deserves that price tag. So like we like we have games like Power World, which are, is priced at I think thirty or forty. You have your 30. Hell Diver, I got Hell Divers, which is priced at 40. 40 um, and 60 or 50 for the like exclusive. Right, but I just got the basic edition. Gotcha, 40 gotcha. Bucks. Um you have uh you know it you have your and like we, we are in the era of the indie and the double A game. Like the only reason you would pay sixty dollars for a game in today's day and age. Like even the last six, even like uh, Dr uh Dragon's Dogma two, which came mm -hmm. out re like like a couple months ago, huge on launch, but it fell off super quick because the quality of like uh, was not there. 
I believe it, man. It, you know, the like, I think back the last time I spent sixty dollars on a game was the best sixty. Last time I spent sixty dollars on a game I felt good about was uh, Baldur's Gate three. And uh, I think the last time that I felt really good about spending sixty dollars on a video game before that, it was a lot. Lies of P. I understand that. I Here's spend- my thing. Uh, just to say this real quick, uh, I only buy, especially on PlayStation, because they have such a monopoly on there. Uh, I only buy shit on discount. I never pay full price for stuff because. At this point, I either know what I'm getting and I think the value is worth it or I don't have to pay full price for a potentially broken game because at this point, that's how you got to look at video games. Yep, you 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 have is the cost benefit analysis. And I think that ultimately the only reason you should pay for a $60 game in today's day and age is if you're already emotionally invested in the series that's forgivable god knows i play every pokemon game that comes out and if it is you know a critically acclaimed by the fans game like a elden ring or a Baldur's gate you know you're like, uh, you know if if, if, if it, unless it, like unless it is a game that you can um, like it, it, i think ultimately i think the purpose of us of like the sixty dollars games is that you need to have an emotional reason why you would want to spend it. Like, and granted, sixty dollars is like nothing nowadays. Most people's bills for their average car, rent, phone, electricity, every bill is like worth is like more than sixty dollars. Sixty dollars into the, in twenty twenty four, it's not nothing to everybody. It's not no amount of money. Sixty dollars can be the difference between you are able to pay your rent or not. But it's like. It's not a huge, huge purpose. A hundred and thirty dollars? That's something you really gotta stop and consider. You still gotta and... stop and consider fifty, sixty dollars. But like <laughs> I you can be impu- you can be reckless and impulsive with sixty dollars. You can't be reckless and impulsive with a hundred and thirty. And what I'm hating about the video game industry now is the Netflixication, the streamification of it all. Not that I'm a, not that I despise PlayStation Plus or Game Pass. I think for what they are currently, you do get a good value for your buck. But However, there's a timer. There's a timer. But not only that, but also the fact that Ubisoft has their own fucking streaming service, video game platform, and that also gives you exclusivity on everything else it's like come on you're trying to bait us into buying this uh, membership because you know nobody wants to actually pay that price for the game because i'll say it again in a month after because i think it comes out november i think uh October for the Star Wars game, two months, a month after Christmas season, it's going to be discounted, like 40%, 30%. Disgusting. Patience is a virtue. Um, Moving on to the first thing that you had sent me. Oh, wait, very quickly. I'm sorry. I want to send... Let me send you one more thing, because this is the first thing I want you to respond to. Okay. And I think you'll really like this. Hold on. It might be a video you've already seen. Uh, I'm sending it to you again. The one I just sent. Over uh, Instagram, sorry. I got you. Cornbread! I already know. I've seen this guy do a cover of um, I Can Go the Distance from Hercule. He's, oh, okay. uh, he's he is a stellar Vocaloid talent. It's he's very very good. But uh, yes, according to the New York Post, the brand owned by Kraft Heinz Company is launching a supersized version of the classic fruit punch flavored drink for Capri Sun fruit punch. Capri Sun is just large fruit juice juice to attract nostalgic fans. Yep, Capri Sun is coming out with a big fucking version again. How much you want to bet this shit tastes like ass? I hope it tastes exactly like the pouch. Because if I it doesn't, it does. throw I'm, it I'm, out. 
throw, throw it out. out. There's no <laughs> fucking purpose for it. If it doesn't taste like the pouch, it's unneeded. Also, they have... I'm hoping that them adding the coloring doesn't affect the flavor because if you actually look at, like, if you actually squeeze a fucking pouch into a clear glass, it's mostly clear. It's got a little mm. tinge, but it's mostly clear. So to get that, like, like that, like, vibrant red, they're going to have to add dyes to it. Let's hope that the dyes don't cause it to taste like shit. Or just a wrapper. Just put a wrapper around it. Literally. Don't fuck with it. It's too Please. good. Please don't. Oh, oh shit! The Super Size Me dude picked the picked rocks that's unfortunate and with cancer no it's probably all that fucking mcdonald's he ate that's what i was saying exactly i was like this motherfucking died 56 is crazy that's too young it, it's this is this is my generation's fucking atkins that's what this is Are you that's what this is i remember watching fucking supersize me in pe class during a movie that like our generation yours and mine yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't get that reference. But yeah, that's you don't know about you don't know about the Atkins diet guy. Mm -mm. The guy came out. Uh, that guy came out with a diet, and then he died like super young. I think also from cancer. Was he the fucker? So, was he the runner? I don't know, but like his last name was Atkins, and it's the I, Atkins I've diet. Com I've covered comedians clowning on him. Yep. Yeah. All right. No, that makes sense. Here's so a that's why I say that. Got it. Here's a something I wanted to pull up, which I thought was very funny. Let's see. Crackle Barrel CEO brand says it isn't relevant and needs a new plan. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I don't, I, I don't think, I think Crackle Barrel is very relevant to a certain subset of of of, of people in America. It's basically like Klansman Waffle House. They don't want the clan there anymore. They want everybody. <laughs> I know they do, but like, there was an entire like court, like like fucking national like thing, hullabaloo, where, where like they fired a gay person and like the entirety of social media right railed their shit until they they rescinded it. And then like like I don't know about you, but every time I see a, a like a black person talking about Crackle Barrel, that isn't like from the like that isn't like from the south and shit they're like yeah i don't go there it feels racist and i'm like i get it like here's it the thing it, it does it does feel racist they've got they've got decent pancakes and biscuits and grits you know but like i i i can i can i i can make a better sausage gravy at home i'm sorry yeah i'm a bacon and eggs man it doesn't appeal to me <laughs> no, I, I do think that um And the gift shop is a really weird touch. Like who has a gift shop in a restaurant? What are you doing? Make up your mind. You're either or. You can't be both. You yeah. both. I think <laughs> the I always I, I will say though, like I do I don't I don't I don't I don't understand. You know. Like I go Okay. I go to Waffle House it's come... cheaper. I, exactly. Let's come up with a challenge. What do you think Cracker Bar Barrel's new name should be? Because you know they're going for a rebranding. You know it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Um, I have one in mind. I don't know if I should say it, though. <laughs> I mean, at this point, they should lean into it. It's called Stonewall's Diner. <laughs> uh, how about American Barrel? I think American Barrel would be good. <laughs> Listen, dude. Like, like the like the the pro the reason it's not the name. The reason why people don't go to this shit is because the aesthetic is that of racism. Like, they got the like no, fucking like little, the like pseudo American the like, pseudo American flag things along. Like, why the fuck are there rocking chairs? I don't know. What's with the fucking rocking chairs, bro? Like you just need a racist old man on it just to yell at people, and then it's perfect. Like the don't get me wrong. As a Yankee, it's a decent way to get some decent, some like Southern tasting kind of food. It's you know, it's 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 it like the like the pancakes, the food. They're like ah, it's fine. You know, it's like it's consistent. It's okay food. Like you get, you can get big plates, fat fucking 
uh, pancakes and and grits and mashed potatoes and gravy and 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 corn on the cob. It's great. It's good. It's like it's like Southern comfort food. Mm. I just don't need to feel like I'm in a a period piece. You don't have to feel like you're in Gone with the Wind. Like that's exactly how it feels. It's just like listen, I got I got like I have like old white women that are my grandmother. I can just go to their house and get the same aesthetic. <laughs> like it's fine. Like I'm not talking to the one I, I'm thinking of. I go to right now, you know, but it's not a grandmother there. Uh, that's that's between me and my therapist, or when we're not on a hot mic. <laughs> Very true. That's usually how it is. <laughs> but but yeah. But yeah, no, nah, I don't. I don't think. I, yeah, for me, I think that's all I got as far as like subjects for this week. It's been a packed week, all things considered. I hear that, man, for real. Oh man, uh, start a new yeah. job. How's that going? Yeah, I started a smoke shop job. It's been pretty good. I got I didn't sick. Know, I did not know it was a smoke shop job. That is perfect for you. Yeah, that is a match made in fucking heaven. Yep, and the schedule is right up my alley too. Six p.m. to three a.m. So, your boy's chilling. I'm right where I need to be. So, do you? So, do you, when you do six to three, yeah. uh, are you awake? Are you doing? You're waking up at like noon, and you're awake, and then you go to work. Or are you waking up, going to work, and then being awake from like three to? You know, and then being awake from like from like when you get home at like three thirty to like seven. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. The second one. No shit. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, that, surprise you? well, that no, I mean, we're three hours of fucking part. So you know, if I wanted to like do the rundown and shit with you, I I would just have to wake up early. I can do that. That's a problem. Literally. Like 6 a.m. your time, that's when I get off, so. <laughs> Days you work, you, uh, is not, is it, uh, um. It changes. It, it changes. I don't know quite yet, but it's usually on the weekend, so. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I, oh, I got some, like, really fucking sad news. My girlfriend's, uh, college shut down. What happened? Not the one she's currently at, the one she got her associates from. DCAD. It's DCAD. Oh, DCAT's closing. They just they're they're just not sticking around. Damn, that's crazy. I'm, and and to everybody listening, we're gonna get hyper local to Delaware for a second, so bear with us. I am baffled that the state didn't come in to bail them out. Yeah, them. they really were like, ah, nah, you guys get like, close because like. Wilmington doesn't have a super vibrant downtown. And I'm going to be honest, having an arts college in the middle of your downtown is such a benefit to just like culture in the fucking city. Yeah, but where was where was it? I don't remember. Market Street. Damn. Like that, yeah. That's why I'm like, what the that's fuck crazy. are you doing, bro? I like, thought it was gonna be like down by the riverfront or something like that. No, no. It was it, the main building is on Market Street. That's crazy. Like people, people who shared like college classes with Dell Tech would go down to like take like their English and classes and shit down at Dell Tech and have that crossover. Wow. Yeah, that's insane. It's it's I it's. Uh, let, let's be real. Are college students going to be big spenders and stuff? No. Are they going to browse? Are they going to go pick up shit from Walgreens, go browse the local coffee shops, like order out from take restaurants and stuff? Are they going to be doing all that? Yes. Are like it is having a college, like in a city like that, is a financial benefit. Like if not from like a, like from certainly from a culture and relevancy standpoint i love wilmington wilmington is my home but i am getting increasingly fucking frustrated with the engrafication of like wilmington of just like in the sterile as wilmington is a city a working class city 
filled with working class people. And when in like in 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 there are people who are struggling and there are people who are doing well. But you but like you can't hot like sterilize the city. Like Wilmington is a black and brown city. Delaware as a whole feels like it just wants to keep fading back into obscurity. It does. Like, it, I it don't never know feels why. like it wants any recognition. And it's like you could say a few things. <laughs> you do have a few things going for you. But oh, even the fact that the fucking president currently is from the fucking place. Most people are like, where is it? I don't know where it is. I've never Bella seen it. Delaware? Mother. Uh, Mother. Every time. And I got to be honest with you, Evan. This is one of my biggest gripes about you personally that i have that you want to stay there and try to put it on some form of relevancy and i'm like i don't even care about the state... rele I, I don't even care about the relevancy at this point it's just i I've i already... understand how much you love the state i'm just saying i, I, I want to be clear i've already accepted the fact that if i want to have a life with meadow i need to come to terms with the fact that i'm probably not going to be able to live where i want to live and i've accepted that it hurts. I'm grieving it, and I'm very sad about it. But I love Meadow more than I love my city. That's and also, the that's the truth. Something, something you've said to me before. You can also leave it, get big, and then bring it back. That's God, another no. option. Well, one of the things that I do is I say make every single video that I make. The location of which is in Wilmington, Delaware. I fully expect that someday, maybe, I would be able to find a way to live here again. And it might not be in a year. There again. I don't even fucking live there right now. I'm not, it might not be in a year. It might not be in five years. It might not be in ten years. It might be longer. But I want to move back. And I want to get into local politics. I want to run for a school board. I want to do shit like that. And that's not on the table for me right now. What's on the table for me right now is being able to survive. So that is the priority as it is at present. Feel you, brother. <laughs> I definitely feel that. Yeah. Uh, Anything new going on with you? With me, um, I got, I got, I got to bust my ass and get something coded for Mariah by tomorrow evening. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, uh, I'm, I did a, I uh, tried the new demo for a new Souls like game that's came out. It's free, a free demo. You can play it for it's eleven gigabytes on Steve's grave. It's got this beautiful, it's called Anotria, the last song. It's got this, it's got a really interesting, it's got some novel mechanics that I haven't seen in other Souls Boy games. It has, um, it has a, a beautiful, like, Italian Renaissance aesthetic. Like, okay. just beautiful colors, beautiful music, like, a, like, like, just, it's just a gorgeous game. And the, uh, game, and the actual gameplay itself is, like, feels pretty good, um, uh, I feel like the uh, parrying system's a little less tight. Uh, I actually, I have, I did an, I did a forty minute podcast where I'm just talking nonstop about it. Um, that should be coming okay. out. I have that. I'll probably, I'm gonna format that and get that pushed out. I'll come out this week at some point after this one, probably like on like, I don't know, Thursday or something. We'll see. Right. I'm trying to get into the habit of like, of like. Trying new medias, watching them, and, and, and experiencing them, and doing reviews on them, which is kind of an excuse to sort of like actually enjoy new content, and watch more television. But uh, <laughs> hold on, what are you doing, Mom? Oh, you've been captured. Hello, beep, Kitty. For everybody listening in audio only, I just caught my son, Momo. My cat, and I made him perform for the camera by dance, by making him do a little happy dance. But yes, but yeah, now nah, that's all I'm doing. I'm um got more content coming out this week. Uh, been behind on my shorts. I've been only releasing one a day as opposed to my normal three. It's just 
I was not able to keep up with that, like that level of grind. I went by hiatus on that. But yeah, no, um, things are uh, uh, doing okay. It's been um, well. That's with my therapist today. I feel I, I there's this, I've realized that there is like a tiny, small, you know, child like inner child element of me that mourns Joey Haggard in some small way. Like not like. Like, I, I, like, it's just, like, imagine what if. What if he wasn't a fuckhead? What if he, like, didn't, like, like what if, like, like, what if we, like, we were able to, you know, like, and then I think about, like, all the shit he did to me and to my sister and loved ones and stuff. Well, I gotta be honest, and I think we, have, we definitely have different perspectives on this with the fact that shitty fathers, regardless of the reason, uh, part of my motivation, at least for being, uh, not in a toxic way, but just for being a man and growing up, is the fact that I know uh, eventually I'll get to right the wrongs that my father did with my own son oh. or daughter or whatever. Just the fact that I'll be able to be a father. Uh, I think the fact that you have the position of, and I don't know if you want this being discussed on the podcast. But I don't care. Go ahead. Having the position of not really wanting kids in your future, I'm just like I feel like that closes the door for having that experience. Not that it won't be complicated and feelings yeah. won't come up. Yeah, the, the, the idea of having children is something me and my partner have talked about. It. We have a lot of different reasons why we would want to do it, why we wouldn't want to do it, how we would go about it, what points in where it would be. I think. Definitely adoption for us is absolutely on the table, but that's not going to happen until we are in a you know, place where we could make sure that the child is stable. Yeah, and we're probably and both, loved. <laughs> and, we, and we're both kind of looking at it like less. Like I can only adopt a teenager. Like, I, yeah, I can like, see that. Like I want to like get a like a 13, 14, 15 year old in here, you know, and say, hey, listen, like, um. I know that you've been getting fucked for a long time. I know that the um, system has continued to fuck you for the entirety of your life. And uh, I recognize that um, I'm just, as far as you're concerned, I'm like a fucking stranger at a sub level who took you into our, my house. You know, I know you think, you know, the society says, like, oh, 15, 16, you're put 13, 14, 15, 16, just don't be fucking adopted. And um, we did want you. We did choose you. And, oh, whatever relationship, we'll put the effort in. And we don't have any expectation on your part to match us in that effort. Uh, we will support you and do everything a parent is supposed to do. From everything from supporting you both now and once you are an adult, and to help figure out college, help you pay for college, disciplining you when you're fucking up, you know, and supporting you when you do well, and and helping you put put you in a position to do well. Understand that there's the trust that needs to be built, and I am willing to put that without any expectation on your part. Like, it's just, like, shit like that. Like, I, like, like, and you, like, a 15-year-old in that position is a kid. They are a kid. But they have had to have a level of, of life experience that they had no fucking business to have to deal with as a result. Do you know that our, um, the, the foster and, um, and the, uh, uh, child protective services system is the way it is and it's as shitty as it is? Because the people that constructed it wanted to incentivize parents to take care of their kids so they wouldn't be fucking put into that shitty system. I believe it. The the our, the American the Amer the American way of doing social services and social safety nets has all has come from the at the at, at the angle of we are going to make this an option, but we're gonna make this so shitty that it would be preferable for you to not have it in the first place. That's why when you get on welfare, like like payments, like whether that is through SNAP benefits or whether that is through cash payments, um, you are you are have have to put yourself into such a situation that you are so dependent 
on those earnings that if you lose them, you're fucked. So you so it is designed to keep you in there. If we had a functional social safety net, you know, if I, they would continue to give me money while I am looking for a job, they would get me into Job Corps or they would get me into a jobs placement program and they would still pay me on top of what I'm getting paid from the job. And until I am able to make enough of a wage where I am self-sufficient. And that is going to be long past, you know, that is like me making, you know, 20, you know, some dollars an hour. We're having like, here's what I don't understand. Why they don't propose a law that's like, if you're on welfare, section eight, whatever the case, you have to have like a savings of $10,000 before you get kicked off. To be fair. Or, I, you know what I think? Here's my opinion. I think that the United States should government should get into the, to, to the business of banking. Personal. Uh, personal banking. And here's what I mean by this. I the, 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 One of the biggest issues that people have is you need to have a bank to be able to get, a, to get your paycheck, to be able to get an apartment, to be able to get a car, to be able to do a lot of things. You need a bank account to get these things. And if you don't have these... You're in a, a bad way, and bank accounts have to be tied to an address. And if you don't have an address, you don't, and you're homeless, you can't get a fucking bank account. So one of the things that I think that what should happen is, is that there should be a bank of last resort. Meaning, if you have a social security, you, you, when you were born, there is, you, you, you there you when you're born you get a bank account that can be accessed through any postal service in the country like through any like main like post office in the country the post office should be in the business of 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 like having a savings account just a savings account for every single american this would prevent this would, A, I'm a big believer in public options because, A, this would make it so private banks are a little less fucky on the fees, especially as it pertains to saving accounts. And, B, it would make it so if, if something catastrophic happens in your life, you still have access to a savings account and the ability to get one and, and fix your life. And if you are receiving benefits like cash payments, they can go directly to to that account so. the only thing i want to say is regardless of your opinion on it this is exactly one of rfk's points and i wish that biden uh to literally make uh america not only a bank but also like kind of your grandfather in the sense that the uh american system would then become your co-signer on a house or on an apartment. Maybe I don't know. I, like my my thing about my only thing about that is is that I don't think that America should be the co-signer. I think that America. I think that the way we do Section Eight in this country is so counterintuitive. What well, should... specifically, so, uh, just very quickly, because I don't think I explained it. Uh, I, I think it's strictly for first-time home buyers to like give them the loan. So America becomes the bank as opposed to them going through a bank. But. Right. The, the, here's the here's the problem. The only problem I have with that is I don't think that the American government should get into lending. I think American government should be into grants. Grants for sure. That when when the American government gives money away, it shouldn't be with the expectation of repayment because you you. I pay taxes and I've paid taxes into this system that I'm currently betting from SNAP. And I once I get a job once I get a job and I start working again and all that, I will continue to pay taxes so that next time I need it, I will have access to it. And so other people at present will have access to it. And so why did I go on that fucking tangent? The reason why I say that is because when the government gets into the business of lending. That's how you get a precursor to 
the student debt crisis. You get. I, I'm just saying. Forgive me if I don't believe I'm characterizing it correctly. I just want to also say a part of his point, at least while he was saying the shit that he was saying on the things that I've watched so far. Uh, is to also expand the use of the post office system to also include not only an actual address, but make it more so with DMV interactions because they're more equipped with people. The DMV tends to be very uh, ill-equipped in the people capital. So he was saying that like you should be able to go to the post office to cash a check or uh, go to the post office to, uh, you know, get ID or a non-driver's license or shit like that. I because agree. that is where people get passports. How 100%. come we can't get an ID? This so. is it. I will say, those are very good points, and I agree wholeheartedly. Not It's not, it's not me endorsing, you know, no, 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 no. Okay, obviously. I, trust me, but, I know. <laughs> but, like, to the point of housing, um, I think that what the government should get into the business to of uh, is not lending for home ownership but should get into the business of property management housing and urban development shouldn't be the interface which landlords get paid for let for letting you know the government use their property as section eight what should happen is is that the government should every time a development is built there are a lot of states that have mandates for low-income housing saying 14 percent of the units need to be used for income housing fine what happens in a lot of these cases is that these buildings that are built with this low income housing will either make poor doors for people to walk through for that housing or they will say that it's available and that it's been it's been filled or that nobody's willing to fill them and they just don't advertise it and they fill it with normal people anyways. So one of the things that I'm suggesting is is that if you know have the government buy up like like at um you know, I'd say, you know, make a law that states that the government has first right of refusal during foreclosures. So if somebody is so, so if a foreclosure happens, the government can come in and buy it at a fraction of the price. And then they can say they can offer to the family that had that house foreclosed, hey, you can now rent this house from us for a much lower payment than what your mortgage was. Section 8 housing. If, if, you, if I go to the government and say, I am housing insecure. I need to get the fuck out of here. I have a job. I have, I, I want, I, I need a place to live. I can't afford this. I can only afford this much in rent. The government would then take me and put me into an apartment or a residence and then there is and then the government is the owner of that property not a landlord who is a part of the program just the government because the big fucking problem is is, is that when you have the private aspect of it leeching regardless because here's the thing, the way the way Section 8 works in this country at present is the government will pay the landlord whatever the fuck the landlord says that like whatever the fuck the like the rent market value of it is. And that's also like what the fuck the landlord says or market manipulations, whatever. So let's say that uh, uh, like, you know, my old apartment mm -hmm. down at down at Delaware Avenue, Wilmington was let's say that the market value <coughs> was what I paid for it, a grand a month. But mm. and but then the landlord wants to get you know let's fuck it section eight. I don't want to manage it. Whatever. They they agree to let it be section eight. The person who moves in can only pay one fifty a month in rent. The government doesn't even pay the difference. The government just pays the rent wholesale. The government takes care of the maintenance. The government can take care of the maintenance, but like a lot of time, but like, you know, it, it, it can take time and stuff. Uh, the landlord, um, like it depends state by state. Some places the government takes care of the maintenance and other places the landlord has to be in charge of the maintenance. But the government, the government pays them the full amount of rent for it. And then the person just pays the government whatever they fucking have. And so what ends up happening is 
this is basically a way for landlords to be like, great, I no longer have to worry about um, X, Y, and Z. Did we lose you there? Are you okay? All good. Just blowing my nose. All good. Um, this, this system has a lot of issues. A old friend of mine, Glenn, he was living in a borderline dilapidated like row home in Wilmington and his and his fucking landlord <laughs> just decided I don't want you here anymore and he was way too poor to like fight it in court and he was living on section 8 and you know they basically fucking forced him out and because the government is bureaucratic they weren't able to fucking stop it they, they were able to put a pause on it once but they basically just came in and told him, get the fuck out. Highly illegal. He was homeless. I had most of his shit in my apartment for months. And, uh, you know, and and and, I, and once he got a new place, he was able to have all his shit back. So you have to wonder, you know, like, like, like just functionally at the end of the day, if I can, if, if you're foreign shit, like I imagine what that would do to the market, right? Like, imagine what that would do to the market, the housing market. Imagine if, like, if you are struggling, you can just walk into the, the post office, say, "Hey, I need a, I, I am housing insecure, and I need, and I need, and I need a place to live." They hand you a fucking form that you that you fill out and in, in, in ship out, and then you get a call from a gov like from HUD and saying, "Hey, we have a uh, a uh, like." Uh, like you, the form says, like what your current address is, uh, and how many miles you're willing to like move from that location, and then HUD calls you and say, "Hey, we found a place here, uh, ready for you to move in. Uh, would you like to? Would you like to? Would you like it?" And then you net, and then you can just, and and guess what? It's as it's as it's as simple as that, and they say. Your, we, we we pulled your income records from from the IRS from last year. Is this still accurate? If it, if yes, awesome. This is how much your uh how, this is how much how much are your expenses? Uh, like how, like how much can you afford in rent? Cool, that sounds fine to us. We'll take that. If not, like uh like talk to us. Okay, we'll lower it and it'll be this much. And then you have a residence. And all you have to do is, and and you and all you have to do is, and they don't kick you out. You can just say, "Hey, I want I want to stay here and I want to stay here another year." And there's no and the and you only, you're, if you're talking, I can't hear you. It's definitely a nice thought, but given our government, it's no, just our, go our government is run by. <laughs> Our, go our government is not just bought by, but run by the types of people who would lose money if we did this. There is, well, I, I think there should be a public option for anything with an elastic demand, in an elastic needs, things like healthcare, housing, food, water, shit like that. There should be a pub at the very, if if not like public, like uh, um, dollars behind, at least a public option. There. Uh, you know, I uh, trust me. Not that I disagree with you. I'm just saying these motherfuckers are supposed to be taking care of the roads. Every goddamn day, I drive on roads that are like Afghanistan. Like, come yeah, on. But, <laughs> well, here's here's the thing. It's like the solution. Like, I put out a vi I put out a video uh, the other day on like how we. Could, I, put, I I go actually did I did I put that video out or is that still or am I still saving that? Like, or do I still have that in the bank. Ooh, I still have it in the bank. I sometimes will record videos and stuff, and like, and I'll throw them up into my YouTube on private. I haven't made thumbnails for them. I haven't SEO optimized them. They're like, they're not even ready to go yet. But they're they're basically videos that I make to like, sort of just like, ah, I don't want to record this week. Let's just fucking put this up, you know? Like, mm -hmm. just I, I bank videos just in case, you know what I mean? And um, one of these videos was talking about how would we pay for free healthcare, and I said, there's three to four ways you do it. You do it through a capital gains tax. You increase the numbers of income tax brackets. You um, uh, you you cap out. You you increase the corporate tax rate to ninety percent, and you um, add um, and you create a public option. 
Those well, definitely it, are it, choices. You, 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 <laughs> so, so like, so, so the so the way it is is, is that you do you do a, you add a two one to two cent tax on every share to every share traded at every transaction. So what does that do? That adds that does two things. That get that kills the penny stock market where so many fucking scams can happen that um that adds a floor to what is considered a valuable stock because if you're sharing you know if you're selling a stock at like like a hundred million like a million shares of a stock that's valued like 10 cents but you're also attacking on like two cents to every fucking share that adds to like a floor of stability to the to the stock market but what it also does is it also adds a ceiling too you're not going to be like you're not people aren't going to be trading stocks at such high volumes if they're going to be trading you know if they trade a hundred million shares of a stock and oh shit that means like you're like you you know you're paying one cent a one cent you know you're paying a million dollars as a transaction fee if you if you sell a hundred million you have know, shares it's not about the value of the stock it's about how many shares you're selling then every time and every time you sell a share you there's a transaction fee with that that's the capital that, that is the example of it that is a, a share tax the, uh, the capital gains tax which is the, the actual thing i was talking about is is a 10 percent tax like however much percent but i say 10 percent for simplicity's sake to um on the on the how much on the accreditation of um the value over the last year so if you bought if you own a property hypothetically uh, the, my pitch on this is that it is we're on asset portfolios worth more than ten million dollars. So if you're at, if you, all the assets you own and shit are if you say own a house that is worth a million dollars and like and you and it's now worth two million dollars, you still don't pay any taxes on that because your all your assets combined aren't you know ten million dollars. But if you ha have a property that is you know ten million dollars and you know, this is just say that's the only asset you have. It's not a portfolio, and that portfolio is now worth in that in, the, in that asset it grows by uh, from ten million to twenty million. You pay, I think it is. If I'm doing my math correctly, you pay a mil. You pay a mil on the increased value of that asset. I think my math is wrong, but regardless, let's, let's not divulge your whole video, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but basically, it's like there are taxes that could just that would that we could put on just wealthy people and the wealthy class that would essentially pay for everything we need. And 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 and, and my friend Amy has a really really good friend of the show, Amy Check. She's don't ooh my oo -oh -oh on um, Twitch. Don't o w o. Don't u w u my o w o on Twitch. Go follow her and on YouTube, same thing. She says, and she makes a very good point. She says that the system wants to protect itself. That there is going to be a point that we are going to hit in the next five to ten years, where. The rich people, the ones who are actually smart enough to know what the fuck is going on, will realize we need to throw a, we need to, we're, we're, what's going to happen is we're going to have basically a repeat of <clears throat> FDR's New Deal to a, a higher extent this time. We're, we're, there, there's going to be increases in taxes on wealthy people, there's going to be increases in minimum wage, social benefits spending, full nine yards. And it's going to come out of, and we're going to take it out of like the the wealthy folks' ass, and they're going and they're and they're going to fight us a bit on it a lot, but they're not going to fight it to the point where they kill it from happening because there's people day to day are going to get to a point where we're just going to go walk into the perceived wealthy area of our country. Of people are just going to start walking into the perceived wealthy neighborhoods and start throwing a uh, uh, Molotov cocktails through people's windows. Like, people are getting to a level of angry and dissatisfied that it is not sustainable. And they know that, and they're dealing with the consequences of that. Without a doubt. Oh my god. Having right, a mic buzz, and so on. 
I've burned you out enough. Let's call this episode. <laughs> no, I, I still wanted to talk. You were just on that point, and I, I was. was I'm no so way sorry. Conti- continue, off. continue, continue, continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, firstly, I was going to say that uh, I don't understand why there's not taxes when you're buying stock. I feel like that's just another, uh, you know, uh, barrier of entry for people who don't have that much money, especially to protect themselves. God forbid you do make a mistake or you oversell or something like that. Uh, Because it really is weird, the fact that we only tax whenever a stock is sold after the assets are, you know, gained. I don't see any reason at all why we, why there shouldn't be taxes and taxes levied on transactions that are a certain level higher than others. Like if you are buying, you know, if I'm buying like four, if I, if I'm like, if I think about like Meadows Grandpa, like. He buys, you know, 10, 10, 20 shares of a stock that costs 30, 40, 50 bucks. Spends like solid 500 bucks grand. He's, you know, he's, 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 he's was smart with his money. Like he, he, he can do that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't see any reason why he would have to pay a few shares. He's a, he's a retail investor. The retail investors like they, they that, that like what you should be doing is because here's the thing and and uh, um but even then it. very quickly i uh, just want to say it, what would be a two percent tax on that and he covers his ass completely even in the event yeah, that yeah, he sure. ne- i don't think there's they, any tax below a certain threshold like if you are like like five hundred dollars to him it's probably worth more than to a VC fund that has an has it has has a you know spring boot based you know you know coded app that autos buys sells and trades on the stock exchange themselves for themselves very quickly I just want to say if people are willing to pay a tax on things that they deem necessary whether it be feminine products alcohol tobacco and an exorbitant tax on these things that again they deem to, necessary to, to be fair the pink tax is some bullshit but yes continue i'm not sitting here and denying that however i am saying that it exists yeah what i am saying though is people who are fortunate enough, fortunate enough to actually make transactions on the stock market will not necessarily disagree with the fact that a few extra bucks isn't going to kill anybody because we aren't talking about we're not talking about poverty right, right. but right. every time a person These are people who is playing in the stock market they are by definition like true at and, least... and i and i will say this though i will say that i would want uh i would put exceptions in for things like pension funds no, of course, and uh, I would even say Roth IRAs and five hundred one ks are protected would not be touched. I'm strictly talking about personal investment for whatever reason, you know. Yeah. And then yeah. obviously commercial and business investing is gets taxed on a different bracket. But I'm oh, just saying, fuck me, dude. I just want the government to stop banks from. I I I just want a law that says if you're sitting on a property. And this bitch ain't been rented out in two years. You got six months to figure out where eminent domaining your ass. See, the thing is, everybody wants not uh, Franklin, but everybody wants Theodore Roosevelt esque uh, policy. And you can't do that shit anymore because now the federal government is actually held accountable in court. The only reason that we had the jungle, the only reason that we had the whole, uh, what's it called, uh, revolution of the meatpacking industry, and also the, uh, I think it was the oil industry or something like that, uh, was because Theodore Roosevelt was able to go to these private corporations, these private CEOs, and pretty much say, I'm the federal government, don't fuck with me. My people are literally going to be poisoned from your food and they're going to die over the course of the winter if you don't step your fucking game up. You can't do that today. Every time a president tries I mean, to. He, he, here's the thing. You you could do this a little dark on my part, but here's my thing, right? It's like the Supreme Court and the court system has all has always supported um, I think I think the problem has always supported the status quo 
It's just right now we have a Supreme Court that doesn't support the status quo. They have a Supreme, we have a Supreme Court that is regressing. We have a Supreme Court that is like Clarence Thomas, like, let's go off of Clarence Thomas for a second. Clarice! My brother in Christ! We all see it. We know you hate your wife. We know you hate your wife. I promise you. I promise you. If you just divorce her, you'll be happier. Nobody is going to call for your disbarment if you have a divorce. It's 2024. It's not 1975 anymore. Your boy Reagan gave us no-fault divorce. You can do it. Your all of your billionaire friends are still gonna give you money and gifts and vacations. You don't They'll have They'll be there to. for the second wedding. They'll be there for the second wedding. <laughs> you you do not need to keep this crazy ass woman around you anymore. Please stop trying to take away people's rights because you hate being married to this bitch. <laughs> If you take, if you, I swear to God, if you go after some shit, like you said, Brown versus Board of Education, that's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Loving versus Virginia. I swear to God, and all that is holy, if you take away, you know, people's ability to marry the people that they want, even just heterosexually, I know at least, uh, I am aware of at least three to four blitzed out white girls from Ellesmere and in cookie monster felt pajama bottoms who will throw rocks through your window. <laughs> so I so I beg of thee, just divorce your wife, please, it'll, and make life easier for all of us. At this point, man, you might as well. I know, dude, I'm just, like, I, like, it's Thomas and Alito, bro, like, the judges that fuck like un unironically, the judges that Trump elected, like Amy Coney Barrett, especially, like they have been, like they've been, like the people that have been, like the, on the court that have been gunning to just take away rights and stuff, have been motherfuckers that Bush put in. True, and I hope some of them have the RBG treatment. But again, she was like twenty years older than anybody else on the fucking court, it, so probably I, not gonna happen. I'm glad that I forget the fuckhead's name. The the other liberal court justice who was basically like said, basically told by everybody, step the fuck down before you die. <laughs> and, and, and 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 thank God they put Katanji Brown Jackson on that court. That woman is going to be there for a while. Thank Christ. But there's going to be some gray hairs pretty soon. No oh, question. God. Dude, you know, you know, you like I and, and and I feel this with the fucking um, with like the Ubisoft uh Yusuke like drama shit. I am I've 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 like that kind of was like the final nail in the coffin, like, like the final thing that like swept the flitch that made me understand there are just white people in this country that hate seeing black people. The, the, that's and like, the worst like, part like, about it like just I'm, quickly, I'm a suburban worst, white dude like i like i was like oh Evan, like, fuck the beer. worst part about it is the fact that it's 2024 you know how hard it is to avoid black people today we're everywhere it is what it is it's i i it's so crazy it's like and it's it's always like the fucking like work faced you know, weeaboos. It's never a cute guy. It's never no. a attractive woman. <laughs> like, here's, you want to know what I think kind of figured out, if I'm being honest? Like, all of these, like, fuckheads who just dog on women, dog on my... Like, just hate does something to your body that just makes you unattractive. Like, I, I, I am... My TikTok algorithm thinks I am a bisexual woman of color. <laughs> and because of this, I get to I get to peer into the realm of what of like what like women are, are thinking and, and engaging with each other on TikTok. And you know what I and, and this has been like two two and a half years of this since I gave Meadow my fucking 
you know, algorithm, and she just ran, ran, like ran with it. It's been great. It's been smooth sailing ever since. Do you know what? Know what I've learned? And and men, lock in. I'm about. I'm about. I'm about. I'm about to tell you all the fucking secret. About to tell you all the secret. Get like a body spray from Bath and Body Works, deodorant, shower daily, put the shit on twice, and autistically yap about like your special interests. I promise you, you're gonna find somebody who who like who likes that. It's just don't treat women like objects. Don't you say have to talk to them. You have to talk to them. They are. People. I know it's scary. They're they are people. It. They're people. They are human fucking beings. I promise you, if you talk to women and you talk to them like your friends and you don't say any weird sexual shit, you're an ace in the hole. You're good. Like, just please, for the love of God, like, there's a reason why women keep picking the fucking bear. And hey, man. It's okay to lean into, you know, being awkward sometimes. You can laugh at yourself. Make a mistake. It's not that bad. That Nobody up, holds you that accountable. You got that quirked up white boy Tism Riz. Like, that's fine. Work it. It's okay. Take my I, word, friend. I, Take I, my word. <laughs> I, liter I literally brought Smash Brothers to me and my partner's first date and then gushed about Skyrim War for like 30 minutes. On our first date. Certified... We ended up we ended up like t making out in like a pavilion like nearby like it was great like like I and, and and we've been off to the races ever since. I promise you, I promise you. Also, like, I I don't think people under men understand how fucking little like attract. I, if you dress in sw a sweater. With like a white collar shirt underneath, and like smell nice, and autistically babble during dates, like you immediately put your chances, like of getting laid, and and, and not even getting laid, just finding a partner who, who some finding someone who finds you attractive. Like there are so many women who just do not give a shit about physical appearance. So very quickly, there's a few things I want to say. Uh, this conversation inspires. Did you hear about the guy who spoke at the college and everybody got mad at him because he was saying specifically to women about being mothers and being uh, wives and stuff like that? No. Not that I want to get it. I don't want to get into the content we, of. We should. The, I hate that motherfucker. I, I just want to say that I think there is a big. Not that it's a conspiracy of any kind. I just think that there is a big path. There is a, a huge pattern that I'm seeing, at least from my perspective, mm -hmm. that puts men and women on a different trajectory uh, by the content that they consume, by the messages that their content, you know, spurts out. Uh, and I think, again, this is not what I know. I just think especially with this generation that's coming up facing covid facing all the communication problems that that brought also i think the reason that we see such a uprising of like conservative and right-wing ideals in young men is because at a certain point i think they became alienated or confused communicating with the other gender and then uh, other sex and then it became a uh what do you call it when you're uh surrounded by people with the same that's opinion. Like, that's that uh, uh info bubble like uh whatever. yeah the so, tunnel of some so, kind so i actually know a little continuum sorry I, I just want to finish with the fact that i think young men who aren't quite at the level of being conservative or right wing yet then get sucked up into that bubble, that whole vibe of being the alpha male versus the beta and that shit, the Andrew Tates of the world, you know, uh, and other stuff that is thinly guised with toxic masculinity. So, I, so sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Then just, I will be finished. I promise. I'm amping. <laughs> I, I'm strapped in. <laughs> I just think that 
then the uh, trajectory happens and it's way to the genie is already out of the bottle there's no real way to pull them back unless they are willing to listen to other ideals so please so so this is a core part so uh where do i start with this so the problem of not being able to get dates so let, 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 let's bring this like down before we bring the uh, elevated political shit into it. To me, the ability to communicate is something that is seldom taught well by people's families and society. It is a skill that you learn through trial, error, by fire. I, you are an example of this. I am an example of this. You can you knowing me from the time I we we were we were children to the time we are you now quote adults i'm sure you have seen my ability to communicate go through different eras based off of said trial and error and the same goes with me without a doubt correct correct you uh you're you're you the ability to talk to somebody who you find attractive and want to be intimate with casually is a skill is an advanced form of interpersonal communication. The problem isn't that that I think a lot of men, and, and this isn't just men, this is young people in general. Mind. I don't think that the problem here, it's more of an issue with men than it is with women, because women are are societally raised to be more social, and it, they have there they, because of that um and, and because of the fact that they need to always be nice and people because their safety is also tied to whether or not they can people please and stuff like that because of how fucking scary being a woman is blah 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 but, but also anti very quickly anti-social tendencies very much come out in young men young boys compared yes. to young women for the point in relation to the point that i just said men are not you know expected to be social and society does not um uh, uh, encourage that really. So, what we have here is a the the and there's been studies with this that's coming. Is what if you want to look at the crux of the issue, you don't look at our p our young people having you know going on dates, having sex, virgin. That's not the statistic you need to look at. What you need to look at is how many friends people have. And the interesting thing is, is, is that a lot of young people today, and when I say young people, I'm talking about people younger than you and I, people in the ninth, in the 18th. Younger 16th, than 17th, 18. 18th, <laughs> younger, the younger than 18. I would even say college age too, like 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, you know, like the, the core colleges, right? These are people who, when doing studies like this, or even asking Cashley, don't have a lot of friends they don't have when in the ability when these to make periods friends of is time, an important aspect of, of communication gets a just adding to your point and this uh, from the time you're born to the time you leave college is when you're expected to make the most amount of friends not necessarily the friends that last a lifetime but that's the when people genuinely quantity. have the exactly right. so um, what's happening is, is, is that the lo like the loneliness epidemic that has, is an issue has always kind of been framed around like by people, men are not able to get to like get with women or get dates or get partners and stuff like that, which to me is putting the cart before the horse. And I've always hated the, uh, hyper focus on that because you have a bigger issue. People men and women, men more so than women, but still men and women, are either by choice, you know, with things like the 4B movement, which is a completely understandable reaction to a lot of the shit that's gone on in the last 10 years. And, you know, every, and, and the incel movement with you know, is, is a, is a, is a is, and we're going to talk about specifically men here, because, you know, there's the, the, the context and the, and the, reasonings and all that of, 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 of like women and stuff like that are a you know a lot of are complex in different ways uh deviate a little bit from the men's issue stuff 
and I don't feel necessarily confident in my ability to speak on it as a knowledgeable authority, both through like my la but, like I know enough to talk about it, but I'm but I, I I feel like just focusing on the one thing here is important because also, you know, there are men like the reason why women, you know, manage things the way they do emotionally and they are socially is because men are a constant threat to them throughout their life. You know, they don't know if a random man is going to hurt them or be their friend. You know, like, that's a whole fucking thing. So we're just going to set that to the side. When you have, ple you, when you have a, a group of young men who are not good at making friends, who, have not, who are not socially equipped due to, you know, being locked inside for a year and a half, to uh, you know, having grown up with an iPad and having to socialize through the lens of that, uh, it, 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 a ever increasing society that is hostile to the existence of children in public, uh, you know the 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 reduction in public amenities and public parks and in, in, in playgrounds and stuff like that. Um, you have a group of people that are desperate for community, and that's where things like the Red Pill movement and Andrew Tate come in. This is the you know. It's, it's not unsimilar to how I came into the atheist community when I was a 12, 13-year-old boy. People on the internet, people on YouTube, people with Facebook and stuff, they were very, very much like, hey, we validate your opinions on, like, not believing in this shit. And you have to also, like, you have to not believe in it full stop. There's no deconstruction. There's no spirituality. It's all hogwash. And you, and you got to be on board for that community. I'm saying side quick side thing for ten seconds. That's part of the reason I love the deconstruction movement. I like that you don't have to lose your spirituality. I'm not spiritual to this day. I still like am, am mindful of some woo-woo bullshit auto safety in spaces, but broadly I don't believe in ghost schools, goblins, gods, or demons. Unless unless uh, unless a Native American person tells me otherwise, or I'm in Appalachia. Um but I digress. Um what you have is is, is that a lot of the uh, the, the 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 that that movement with like the, the, the tater tots as I like to call them, um, are offered. Hey, I care about your feelings. I care about X, Y, and Z. I like and then they get lulled in, and then then he starts laying you into the misogyny, you know, because you you know you you it's not your fault necessarily. Well, it is your fault because you are not do it you're not fit to fitting this archetype and then if you aren't and if you fit the archetype and you're still not getting results it's the women's fault and so you end up having you know people kids who would otherwise like be perfectly fine and nice kids desperate for community being told hey you need to adhere to this otherwise we're going to kick you out this is something that a lot of alt-right movements do they go after really lonely people and you know you have people who other who don't necessarily think i think it's fair to say that all alt groups do these this is right. all cold tactic this yes. is how they do it that is exactly what it is now here's now there's a big controversy on the left for a while that's happened is that there really is not a good out from a left-wing perspective for men. I like to talk about it from a perspective of, listen, I understand you're lonely. I understand, like, the question I ask is, I understand you find the girls attractive and you like them, but I would ask first, do you have friends? Do you have people that you like hanging around with? I just want to, like, I'm sure that, like, you know, spending time with a girl would be nice and fun, and you guys might be able to do things that you're, you, know, you might be a little older for you. But I also think that before you can do that, you should, you should, you, let, you should focus on, you should focus on, like, making friends and doing all that stuff. Like, like there's, there's the pr biggest problem <laughs> with, the, with the left is, is that a lot of uh, my fellow left wingers is, is that one of our biggest, like, but my biggest criticism on this particular issue is that they'll say, eh, just don't be a misogynist and you're a kid and everything will be figured out. There's no concrete examples. If you ask, how do you... And I, like, if, I just like, want to say really quick, yeah. uh, 
And if you don't want it, if you don't think that's a good reason for the sentimental shit, right? Let's be real frank here. There are going to be moments when that girl, the one that takes your breath away, is going to piss you off. And yep. not not being misogynistic, just being honest, you're going to want homies to talk shit and just be like, yo, am I tripping? Because I need somebody to, hit, you know, play this off of and just let me know where I'm wrong. Right. You need, you need to, um, you, you, you need, you, like, you need that healthy, um, you need that healthy, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, ground. Oh my fucking god, I hate, I hate, sorry about that. All right, so no, I, I, I typed it, I opened up a not, I, and here's my example, right? And here's mm. where people, where they, 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 these right wingers get these like kids in, right? You're a 14, 15 year old boy. You think this boy or this girl is really cute, and you want to, and, 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 and you, they like you, you like them. And you like want to kiss them or something, but you don't know how to, and you're you're not gonna ask your fucking parents, God fucking forbid. So, I don't know. What do you what do you do? Well, uh, you go into Google, you type in. Here, let me. Uh, you go into Google, you type in how to kiss a girl, and then you pick up like the first video. Oh, look, here's one right here, top top of the thing. And this is, and who is the first person to pop up with this? Guy named Coach Kyle. Look at his fucking page. Look at this I fucking banner. Look at this fucking banner. It's it's like dating social confidence. He's talking Can about. Can you share your screen? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I'm so sorry. I just realized I was not sharing my screen for you. I'm very sorry. I apologize. That's uh. That one, oh, uh, yeah. that that one's on me. My bad. <laughs> no problem. Here, but cool. yeah, like I was saying, why is that? There we go. I was trying to keep. I was trying to prioritize you. Look, and and, and here's this fucking page. It's like very much yeah. like different women. Confidence blueprint, tips to dominate group conversations, how alphas escalate, alphas escalate with girls. With girls. Yeah. Like, like I don't want a 14-year-old boy learning how to interact with women from fucking like Amish McGee over here. You know what I mean? Like that that's that's I think a recipe for some fuck shit happening. So it's like, well, that's I, exactly I, what my uh, just to say, that's exactly what my point was, uh, that uh, these kids get sucked up into this phenomenon. And then not that it's not their it's not their fault at the beginning. But once they're old enough to know better, then it becomes their fault. They become complicit. And right. uh, I'm just like, I think I come at it also with this perspective. A lot of the messaging in male uh, uh, generated content and content that is supposed to be consumed by males is the lone wolf being all alone but still being strong, uh, you know, making the final stand, indomitable human, human spirit, all that shit. And I think part of the, uh, you know, uh, the negative of that type of messaging in this content is that people then seek out loneliness because they feel like that's what they should experience. So it, it, it's just a, it's just a perpetuation cycle of suffering. And so it's so based. And so if you're listening to this and you either are a 14, 15 year old kid or you're the parent or have someone in your life that is at that age, uh, don't it, it, like tell them, hey, listen, I don't care how fucking weird it feels. You can ask me whatever you want, and I will give you like the lowdown. Cause it's like I like the there's like there's just no like the the internet is a blind with do, do, does do, does Amish McGee over there fucking probably show you how to like do it properly? Like, I guess. 
but then yeah, but now, let, now now he's in your feed. Now he's in your feed. Let's also be honest. If you don't know how to kiss a girl, what is the shame in asking? Exactly. In the heat of the moment. Exact. I I I, pro- I promise you that if a girl likes you and you say that and you and you're you both you're both like 15 16 year old kids and you say i it bashfully i've never kissed anybody before nine times out of ten they're gonna find that kind of adorable and even if you say hey would it be okay if i kiss you like that is okay in a setting where you know that the person likes you yeah it's, it's not like, gonna kill the vibe a- Consent is a important thing. He, like you, very much. Like you, just like I promise you, picking up girls is not something that exists. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You, you have to, you, you have to remember that you, happy women will. If they want to sleep with you, they will sleep with you. If they want to be with you, they will. They will be with you. If they want to be friends with you. They'll be friends with you. Women are humans. Just like how if somebody, if you go up to somebody and you're like, hey, let's be friends and talk about all this shit. Whether or not they're friends with you, it's an interpersonal interaction. It requires the consent of both people. And I'll just frame it, uh, I'll just frame it in this way. Think of it in the sexual light for a second, because let's be honest, for some of us, that tends to be the outcome, right? What is better in your opinion? picking up a girl quote unquote and potentially getting somebody who is kind of closed off on certain subjects versus somebody who is overly exaggeratedly happy to be around you is comfortable with you and is willing to explore whatever thing potentially if it's something that you both share i prefer the second option I prefer having a trusting situation where both parties know, hey, regardless of the outcome, we're going to have safe, we're going to have fun, and it's going to be safe. Yeah, it's like, I promise you, more communication, like, more communication is, like, important. Like, I, 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 it should go without saying, but I need to say it because society is fucked. No means no. Always be communicating, and if something doesn't feel right, it's not. It doesn't hurt to stop and say, "Hey, let's change what we're doing." Just saying, like it is so important to like communicate with your partner. Like I, I have had, and I don't like to talk about it anymore, especially because like Meadow's not comfortable with me talking about past partners and shit. But I've had one night stands. I've had. I've only been with someone one or two times. Like the first time I've been with someone, I'm very much talking like hey is this okay is this good i i'm just trying to figure out what's like you, what you want like what is com- you're comfortable with what's yes the no's like let like please let me know if like i if you if you if, you, if i'm if i'm doing something that is not good for you so i can adjust like, like it's very much a like the whole purpose of you know intimate acts is for both parties to feel good and if you aren't feeling good communicate that if, if your partner's not feeling good like it's it in in especially if you're young and you don't know necessarily what the fuck what you both are fucking doing make sure like you both are aware of that don't pretend you know something you don't and if and say at the top of it and if you hear the guy and, and this is a heterosexual context by the way because both of us are straight dudes and well i don't want to speak on the gay experience but there's probably some relevance here like hey Please tell me if 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 you don't if if, I, if if I'm doing something wrong or different, and talk and like like if you I just want to just say for the record if you're eating a girl out or some shit, like especially if this is your first time doing it with that particular person, like you should be coming up for air constantly and saying hey does this feel good does it does this feel good does this feel good what if I move my tongue over here what if I do this all of this is very important aspects of this that you need to do like when you're with somebody for a very long time there's very little communication that needs to happen. sometimes like something people's bodies like like something different spontaneously something's change and this will be updated but broadly speaking 
you, once you're with somebody enough, you, you it becomes kind of second nature. But when if you're doing this for the first time, especially if you don't have experience doing it, ask questions of your partner. They want you to make them feel good. So they will appreciate you being clear about it. And if they're not, that prob and if they're judging you about this, that means probably they are not at an emotional maturity level where they where you guys should even be fucking doing that. Just saying. Yeah, and and the same goes and the same and the same goes for you. That is not necessary. If 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 your partner is giving you head for the first time, or riding or whatever, and and, and it doesn't, don't be afraid to say that. You know, every everybody's feelings are important here, and, and as long as consent is given participation is you know encouraged and people are communicating like don't be there like you're you have each other's genitalia in your mouth. like there really are no questions off the fucking table at this point don't be honest. and i'm just i'm just gonna say i know there's a uh, quite quite a bit of fear in the uh younger generation in terms of this stuff especially with guys uh this also helps with the idea that Nothing wrong is happening, but also you're making a safe environment, you know? And that's how you don't become a shitty guy. Just doing that. Yeah. That sounds about right. Um, do you want to keep going, or do you want to wrap it? Because I got to piss, and if, if we're going to wrap it, we'll wrap it. If we're going to pause it, I'm going to pause report it. Uh, I'll let you call it. What do you want to do? Um and hot as shit yeah for everybody listening i'm currently recording this shit at it's what what's the temperature outside temp outside oh it's 84 degrees outside jesus and i am in a room that has a beefy computer running so it's generating heat like a mad person and i have a ring light on me with no ac I got a box fan underneath my desk, and that's about it. So I am, I am, uh, I'm slippery. I've been. I literally went downstairs and got like a giant pitcher of ice water to sort of just like top continuously top myself up. So I don't die. Yeah, stay hydrated, boy. I think you and I should probably do a live stream or something this week since you're off for two weeks because you got that COVID vacay, baby. True. Tell me about it. Uh, let's yeah, wrap I got it COVID. up. Yeah, let's wrap it up for the time being. I really got to piss. But um, and we've been and we've been right. and and the total runtime of this episode is going to be about two hours, anyways. Word. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you your time and your listen. I've been in for my media TV. So uh, this is my co-host, Mr. Brian Noda to Ortega. You can find him at Instagram.com slash Noda to underscore Brian. And uh, if you want, and you can subscribe to me here on YouTube, which is the video version, or if you're listening to the audio version, please go subscribe to me on YouTube, anyways. I make good shit. But if if you're willing to support the show in other ways, please consider donating a dollar a month at hi.media.gg/tip. It is a boon to my mental health. You get exclusive access to uh, videos not seen anywhere else in the internet on di on Discord, as well as early access videos as well clips and the like, as well as other perks given to service through Discord. I am very poor. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I appreciate you, your time, and your viewership, and I will see you guys next time. Love you.